Sometimes a video game comes along that fundamentally changes our perception of what digital technology can do. And more often than not, games like these have been some kind of shooter. The unexpected functioning of an early CPU turned Space Invaders into the most influential game of all time. Doom's 3D technology revolutionized the way that games were played and created a huge audience for a new genre. And the Unreal and Far Cry graphics engines set new standards for what could appear in a simulated real-time world. The theme of this series has been that digital RPG creators were often forced to adopt different artistic strategies because technology lagged behind what they really wanted to do artistically. But in this video, we're going to look at two times when RPGs led the way technologically, achieving breakthroughs in the immersiveness of games. The topic of which game was the first to implement true 3D graphics has been a contentious one, because there are different definitions of what true 3D means. I take no side on the issue of who was first or what is real, but what I will say is that the 3D technology developed by id Software for their famous first-person shooters was probably the most influential. What most people don't know is that id's famous leap into 3D gaming was partially inspired by the development of a now classic RPG, Ultima Underworld. Like many of id's creations in the 1990s, Ultima Underworld featured real-time 3D environments and 2D sprites. At first, the game looks like any of its PC RPG predecessors. A player fights his or her way through a dungeon, facing enemies out of a first-person UI. But the differences quickly become clear. In older PC RPGs like Eye of the Beholder, players act from a first-person viewpoint in what appears to be a simulated 3D space. But this is an illusion. The dungeon is actually made up of pre-rendered squares placed on a grid, and the player is only seeing and moving one square at a time. In Ultima Underworld, the environment is being rendered dynamically, and the player can wander throughout it in a much freer way. Although not the first game to use this kind of perspective and movement, id's Wolfenstein and Catacomb games beat Ultima to market, Ultima Underworld took great advantage of its 3D environment. Darkness and distance obscure the player's sight, but he or she can extend that sight radius with light sources like torches. The player can run and jump across obstacles, platformer style. A simple physics simulation allows the player to throw objects and bounce them off surfaces in the environment. All these elements come together to create a sense of immersion for the player. That is, the levels feel like a persuasive world and not just a tabletop game with a graphical overlay. The features I've mentioned are basically obligatory in today's games and don't seem that impressive on their own, but this fact is a testament to Ultima Underworld's influential status in the history of video games. And it's one of the few times that technology and the systems that the new technology could support were compellingly demonstrated in an RPG before other genres. The other game I want to address is a little more well-known by modern players. Four years after Ultima Underworld, in a time when many industry insiders thought big, technically impressive RPGs might be dead, Final Fantasy VII became a breakout hit. Final Fantasy VII was a success for a number of reasons, but at the time of its release, it was well known for a feature that was then called Full Motion Video. Today, we would just call these pre-rendered cutscenes, and almost every game with a storyline has them. But it's remarkable just how much better Final Fantasy VII is at integrating these scenes with actual gameplay than many of the games that have come after it. The game's famous opening scene is a great example of this. The character models are amusingly blocky from a modern perspective, but the rest of the transition is still really well executed and does a wonderful job of setting the tone and scope of the game. Indeed, throughout Final Fantasy VII, we are treated to many larger-than-life establishing shots that blend into or out of live gameplay quite smoothly. It's clear that the designers of the game wanted players to feel like they were in a living, breathing world that had more to offer than just a series of increasingly difficult dungeons. This strategy, and the technical innovations behind it, certainly paid off, as Final Fantasy VII broke through to millions of gamers who didn't normally play RPGs. I should be clear that neither Ultima Underworld nor Final Fantasy VII invented the technologies that were part of their appeal. The first 3D game is, as I said, a matter of debate, but id Software's Wolfenstein 3D and Catacomb 3D both beat Ultima Underworld to market with the same kind of tech. Ultima Underworld just did a better job of using it, and in its own time, Ultima Underworld was also the better selling and more well-known game, and was widely praised by critics for the immersiveness of its simulated world. Likewise, Final Fantasy VII didn't invent CG cutscenes, it was just able to do a lot more with those cutscenes than any contemporary game, and as a result, it was able to immerse millions of players in a vibrant fantasy world for the first time. If a modern RPG has a chance to repeat what Ultima Underworld and Final Fantasy VII were able to do, the technology it uses will almost certainly be virtual reality. Plenty of great games have been made for VR hardware, but few have been praised for the immersiveness of their fantasy worlds. But as history tells us, there's no reason an RPG can't be the next one to do just that. 